What's up guys, to celebrate the release of my new Skillshare class, Shopify store setup, understanding the Shopify e-commerce platform, I'm breaking down five surprising things about Shopify that you may not have realized, or at least are just important things to know, depending on how you intend to work with the platform. These are five things that came up for me while I was creating the class, which I thought might make an interesting video for you guys as well. So without further ado, here they are. Number one, there is no such thing as a sub collection. Literally this week, I was talking to a client who has quite a large product range on Shopify and he expressed frustration to me that product organization in Shopify doesn't really follow a tree-like structure of categories within categories like some sellers might expect. Instead, what you have in Shopify are quote unquote collections, which are essentially the only way to natively group together products in Shopify. Each collection has its own page in Shopify, which you can filter down further using tags, vendors, types, meta fields, availability, price, and a few more. Through this second level filtering, you can kind of create a tree-like structure using tags. So you can filter down to a certain tag within a certain collection, creating one level deep of nesting, but there's not a direct connection between tags and collections. Just like collections, Products can and often are tagged by multiple tags, which is cool in one way, it's very flexible, but it's not an ideal system for nesting and linking together quote unquote categories like you might see in the menu structure of some stores. Therefore, if you wanna create the illusion of sub collections in Shopify, you'll need to come up with something custom. Number two, variants are what gets added to the cart. This point is not really going to be relevant to you admin only users out there. From your perspective, all you need to ensure is that you know what combination of options a customer selected in order to deliver them the exact product that they ordered, of course. But for those of you working on developing for Shopify or working with developers on Shopify, it's important to note that a product is not actually what gets added to the cart. What gets added to the cart is a variant. What you might not realize is that every product, regardless of whether it has options or not, has at least one variant. This is where the default title variant comes from. If you create a product with no options, you may not realize it, but a variant gets created as well. We can see proof of this by looking at any product page, even if it has no variant options. If we look inside the product form, you will find a variant ID somewhere here. While the product has its own ID as well, it's the variant ID that gets submitted to the cart. And then if we use the cart Ajax API to view our line item, you'll notice that the ID of the line item is the same as the variant ID. We do have product information here, but the product is automatically inferred from the variant as each variant of course only has one product that it belongs to. It's not particularly obvious, but inside your theme code, there'll be some code to check whether a product has a single variant. And if so, the variant can be easily inferred from the product. But if a product has multiple variants, you will need some way for the user to select the variant they want. This is something I've found is easily missed when clients ask you, for instance, to create some sort of quick add to cart functionality. It's often forgotten that if a product has multiple variants, then there'll need to be some sort of selector for the customer to add what variation of the product they would like. To find one or more variant IDs on a product from within your theme code, you can do so via looping through the variant objects on the product object, which will work even if the product just has one variant. If you're looking for the variant ID in your admin, there are two ways. The first is if you have a product with multiple variants, then you can find the ID in the address bar once you click on to one of its variants. The second is if you have a product that has only one variant, then you can add .json to the end of the URL, hit enter and see the product object represented as JSON. Here you can view the hidden default variant object and the ID field within it to find the variant ID. Again, this only really matters if you're doing some sort of theme development, but it is a bit of an interesting quirk within Shopify. Number three, the online store sales channel is not the only sales channel in Shopify. Just like every product in Shopify has at least one variant, every Shopify store needs at least one sales channel. And the one that gets installed by default is the online store sales channel. Of course, the online store sales channel is the most common sales channel in Shopify. But something to remember is that Shopify core can power a range of e-commerce or commerce experiences. It's entirely possible, despite it being installed by default, 
that a merchant might not even use the online store sales channel. For instance, maybe you've heard of Hydrogen or the Storefront API. The Hydrogen sales channel is an example of a separate alternative to the online store sales channel. While the Storefront API can access some of the data from the online store sales channel, the code it uses to deliver the front-end experience is completely different. But of course, Hydrogen is not the only example. Other examples include Facebook, Instagram, Inbox, and Point of Sale. Probably not relevant to a lot of you, but something to consider for the future, selling products via a theme is not the only option in Shopify. Number four, theme settings are stored in your theme code. While the online store sales channel is not the only sales channel in Shopify, it's still the most common one. And the way to customize your front end on the online store sales channel is of course via a theme. The important thing to note with themes is that all themes are just folders of files. Files that not only contain HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and liquid code, but they also contain data relating to the theme as well. If I go into my admin to edit a product name, that's going to affect my store no matter what theme I'm on because the data is stored at the store level. But when using the theme editor, any changes I make here are stored on the specific theme. We can see this by going into the relevant JSON files and updating values at the code level. You'll notice that if we refresh the theme editor, the value in the user interface changes as well. And vice versa, if we change the value in the theme editor and refresh the code editor. While this makes things handy for staging changes during development, there is a greater risk here of mixing up data in between themes or worse, losing data if a theme gets accidentally deleted. You can clearly see how changing a setting in the theme editor only affects one theme at a time by simply duplicating a theme, making a change to that duplicate, and then viewing them side by side. The data was the same when it was duplicated, but now any updates made to either of them are going to be made out of date with the other. So definitely something to consider and manage if you're working with multiple themes on the one store. Number five, apps don't live on Shopify. This was something that confused me initially when I created my first Shopify app. While Shopify apps sit nicely under the apps heading in the admin, these apps don't actually live within the Shopify platform. As I talk about in the class, the only thing that makes a Shopify app a Shopify app is its use of the admin API, allowing it to plug into the Shopify store and make backend edits to store data. For this reason, apps largely play by their own rules with their own user interface, although they can adopt Shopify's Polaris design system if they would like to look a bit more native to the Shopify platform. This is what most, if not all of the apps developed by Shopify themselves do to make the experience of using the app more seamless. So next time you have an issue with an app, unless the app was developed by Shopify themselves, you'll often have to consult with the third party app developer to overcome it. So that covers five things about Shopify that you may or may not have expected. If you'd like to take a look at the full one hour class on Skillshare and try out the Skillshare platform for free, check out the link in the description. Most of the time Skillshare offers a seven day free trial, but it totally depends on when you're watching this. So click on the link now and see what's on offer at present. Until next time, make sure you're subscribed to the channel for more Shopify content and I'll see you on the next video.